All right, a new memo from the DCCC explains how the party did an analysis and a survey around health care policy about a year ago and presented it privately to House Democrats here. The memo is just surfacing now. It was obtained by the Intercept's Zed Jelani. Now, the first thing you need to know about this survey is, is the way that they ask the question. And it's, a, it's, it's kind of an odd framing uh, when you're talking about a policy question. This is what they asked people. What's one improvement that you would like to your health care? And 12% of people said, make it single payer, universal health care, et cetera. But think about that answer. It's a total non sequitur. What I would conclude from that is that about 12% of the population wants single payer health care so badly that no matter what question you ask them, they're going, and how you phrase the question, they're going to say single payer. I want, I want single payer. And that, that feels about right to me. That one in 10 people are deeply passionate about that. While a majority may support it, it's, there's that rabid kind of 12% that, yes, what I'd like you to do for my health care is make it single payer, which of course doesn't make sense. You know, you'd have to do that for everybody's in order for it to be a single payer. So what do you think most people said when they were asked, how would you like your health insurance to be improved? The common sense thing people said was, I want it to be cheaper. You want to pay less money for your health insurance. That, that's obvious. They lumped that in with other obvious answers, which were, I wish uh, drug prices were lower. I wish premiums were lower. I wish deductibles uh, and co-pays were lower. So this is the survey that came in. Uh, the two firms kind of analyzed this and then presented it in a private meeting over at the DNC for House, to House Democrats last April. And they said, OK. Here are our findings, and if you look right here, you will see that 44% of people want lower premiums, they want lower deductibles, they want lower drug costs, and only 12% want single payer. And then they presented two pages of criticisms that have appeared from the Heritage Foundation, the Wall Street Journal, and elsewhere about single payer, and didn't include any talking points rebutting it. It wasn't one of these, if they say X about single payer, here's how you can respond to it. You know, if they say, well, taxes will go up, you say, well, your your the money that you take home will will actually go up because you won't have to pay for health insurance anyway. It didn't it didn't include that. It was just here are negative things that people say about single payer. Only twelve percent of people want it. Forty four percent of people want their health care costs lowered. Okay, so now what should you say when you're out on the trail uh, talking about health care? Talk about more tax breaks for people so that they can go out and buy cheaper health insurance. And in fact, if they had done that in Obamacare, it would have been better policy. The, the biggest complaint that people have about the ACA is that their costs are too high. Their costs are too high because of a deliberate political and policy decision that Democrats made in 2009 to keep the price tag at, at a fairly arbitrary trillion dollars over a, over a 10 year period. And they, they had all sorts of mechanisms that they used to keep the price of Obamacare under a trillion dollars. And one of them was to be stingy on the subsidies and also, uh, you know, press down on the income scale where you could be if you get a subsidy. So if you make over a certain amount, you get no subsidies, which is all bad policy, but also bad politics, because then everybody who's up here who's struggling and is paying uh, a lot of money for health insurance looks down below at them and they see other people getting help. And that resentment gets turned into into easily into into right wing rage at the enti at the entire thing. That's why programs like Medicare and Social Security are much more popular because yes, that guy over there is getting Social Security, Medicare. I'm getting it too. So so you're not hostile uh, toward towards your neighbor over that. So and the second thing they say is also ironic. They say, tell your audience Medicare should be able to negotiate lower drug prices. The irony here, and they say just like the VA does, the irony here, of course, is that in 2009, Democrats cut a deal with Big Pharma that made it illegal for Medicare to negotiate drug prices in order to get pharma's uh, support for Obamacare and also to get $150 million of pharma spending to help uh, elect Democrats in, in 2010. Now, if you think back to 2010, you know how much good that $150 million did. Democrats got wiped out across the board. Uh, so, th so those are the two recommendations. Don't go any further than that. Just say, you know, in general, 
I prefer a policy that keeps health care prices down. They say don't even, you know, only answer those if asked. Only, only provide those two platforms if asked. In general, what you should just say is that the Republican health care plan is terrible. It takes away health insurance from 24 million hardworking Americans. Uh, and I'm going to stop Republicans from doing terrible things. So the 44 percent who would just like their own health insurance to be cheaper, that's understandable. Yeah. <laughs> Put me, all, yes, put me in that 44%. <laughs> we're sure. all trying to get by. And then there's the 12% yeah. who are basically thinking more collectively about the issue, right. not just about Even themselves. Even when they're asked individually, they think collectively about it, which is, which is interesting. And so you easily could have written a memo that said, uh, if you frame single payer as something that reduces your drug costs, reduces premiums, reduces deductibles, which obviously it does all of those things, and then you start adding together all the different categories. There was 5% that they said wanted their, their plan to be simpler. People are driven nuts by the complexity uh, of these plans. And, and people intuitively grasp that they are overly complex on purpose to screw you. So if you add together the 5% the of people that want it simpler, the 44% of people uh, that want it cheaper, 12% that want single payer, you know, you're over 60% of people. Now you might within that 44% have some people who are ideologically opposed to single payer. Those people absolutely exist. Once they, once it's passed and once they get it, uh, you find that they actually will come around and be supportive of it. The guy with the sign says, hands off my Medicare, you know, government hands off my Medicare is the best example. Okay, well, I know you said there's a vote coming up and you got to turn right. around and get, go inside, but before you go, can you just synthesize this Let's say that the 44 percent or a significant portion of them would be open to single payer if they knew it would reduce their own family's health care costs. Can you make that argument? I, you, you can make the argument very simply. You, you know, sing, you know, Medicare, uh, you know, properly properly done reduces uh, people's health reduces people's health care costs. Medicaid does as well. People, once they get on Medicaid and Medicare, or they, they tend to like that insurance. Medicaid has. Uh, some uh, some problems with uh, access to, to to doctors who who refuse to take it, and that's something you'd have to deal with. But yeah, absolutely. Uh, if if all you have to do is, is design it to make it cheaper, it's not it's not complicated. You say, okay, here's here's what it here's what it would cost, or as in Bernie Sanders' plan, it would cost nothing. While depending on your income, your taxes may go up to pay for this publicly funded program that expense will be more than offset by the money you are saving by the elimination of private insurance costs. People have been talking a lot about, well, I, I, what about the taxes that we'd have to pay in order to pay for that? And Sanders, I think, actually gets this wrong. He says, well, yes, we'd have to raise taxes, but you'd save so much money that you'd still um, you know, have more money in your pocket. I think that's wrong because if you successfully implement a single payer plan, you're going to squeeze a lot of waste out of the healthcare system. That waste is one one person's waste is another person's job. Pharmaceutical representatives, for instance, if those jobs got squeezed because drug prices were going down, you now have a shrinking economy, and you now have people that are in need of work. Uh, and in order to get the economy going again, you need to stimulate it, which means you need a tax cut. So, in fact, it, you know, a, a Medicare for All plan properly done wouldn't come with a tax increase, it would actually come with a tax cut. Um, that, that requires um, people to uh, you know, kind of understand the way that uh, the deficit works and the way that uh, money flows between uh, the, the private and the, and the public sector. And we, we interviewed Stephanie Kelton, who uh, you know, is, is big in the field of modern monetary theory, and people can go find that interview. But that, that's, that's the general idea, that you actually would need to stimulate the economy because you're pulling some waste out of it. And then instead of people producing, you know, uh, uh, these wasteful jobs, uh, you, you might be able to put people back to work doing uh, more generally productive things that they might even enjoy more.